For 26 years of my life, home was 22nd and Broadway, until the spring of 2011, when that home became Carthage. I felt a visceral pull to move back to Tunisia after the Tunisian Revolution. Tunisia has a golden opportunity, one that comes so rarely for a state to redefine itself and its core values. When I came back, I realized that I was discovering Tunisia for what it really was, so many aspects of the country that had never been exposed before. Tunisia was long perceived by international governments as the ideal partner in the Arab world. Its non-threatening profile and checklist of reasons to endorse its government rendered this perception justifiable. It placed Europe as its number one business partner, protected human rights, fought against terrorism, and achieved impressive macroeconomic figures. This checklist, however, was just that, a list. A list that allowed for a much graver one to be hidden in the background. In the wake of its revolution, Tunisia was forced to confront a much bleaker list, one that included extremely disadvantaged regions, increasing poverty levels, and an alarmingly high unemployment rate. This was a reality check for most Tunisians. Its current challenges today are a result of short-term thinking with no long-term vision for sustainability. As a result of this emerging reality, Tunisia was not included in the World Economic Forum's Global Competitiveness Index in 2012. This caused uproar in the Tunisian press. Many businessmen and politicians were scandalized by this omission. It turns out it was a way of protecting the country, for if they had published the truth, the country would have been in much worse shape than it already was. Around the same time, I joined a remarkable group of youth to form the Global Shapers Tunis Hub. The Global Shapers community is a network of hubs developed and led by young people around the world who are driven to make an impact on their communities. And it's also an initiative of the World Economic Forum. I, like my peers, see an incredible potential in this tiny Mediterranean country to become an example for other nations in the region and around the world who are transitioning from autocracy to democracy. As a group, we soon learned that in addition to its traditional indicators for competitiveness, such as market efficiency, institutions, infrastructure, the competitiveness index for the first time included two additional indicators, environmental and social sustainability. So this figures into a new concept called sustainable competitiveness. This is a new development model that balances economic prosperity with social inclusion and environmental stewardship. This new model, I genuinely believe, is crucial in helping address the main challenges facing Tunisia today. We don't have to sacrifice sustainability for economic recovery. On the contrary, the more socially inclusive and environmentally responsible we are now, the more economically competitive we will be in the long term. In light of this, our initiative is to build a Sustainable Competitiveness Council, a working group of Tunisian leaders from civil society, the public sector, and the private sector who share this vision for sustainable development, and who more than anything see an opportunity in Tunisia's transition to guide it on the right path. We don't have to reinvent the wheel, we just have to change the direction it's going in. During our first focus group with around two dozen of these Tunisian leaders, we heard some very different views. Some people who said, economic concerns are not a priority right now. We're an emerging market, we need to work on our economy and solidifying our democracy. Then we were pleased to find others who were already integrating practices of sustainability into their companies or into the work of their NGOs. One CEO worked tirelessly to integrate recycling practices into every level of his operations. Another NGO that we work with uh, works with over 100 handicapped youth to provide them with schooling, rehabilitation, and professional training, and then lobbies the private sector to find them actual job opportunities in the market. This may seem like no big deal in California, but in a country where these practices rarely exist, it takes an enormous amount of will from these leaders. By bringing these people together in the same room was already powerful. We could already feel that there was leadership here that just needed to be mobilized. So this is exactly what we're doing now. With the Global Shapers, we are following up with each and every one of these people through video interviews, 
to expose these local success stories and prove to Tunisians that this model is attainable. This is not something that happens elsewhere that cannot happen here and cannot happen now. So here's the big question. How do we make sustainable practices a norm here now? How do we change this discourse that we are an emerging market, we are going through a transition, we're simply not ready? More importantly, how do we learn from the mistakes of the US and Europe, who prioritized unbridled growth to the detriment of social equality and environmental protection? I don't necessarily know the answers to any of these questions. But what I do, now, I do know is that Tunisia is at the precipice of being able to plan its future. And I think that the Sustainable Competitiveness Council can provide the strategic leadership that's needed right now. Tunisia has this once in opportunity, once in history opportunity to define itself. I'm lucky enough to have it taking place in my lifetime. So I plan to make the most of that lifetime and this chance.